It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. I just found an article that someone sent to me about how to stay consistent. Now, this is something that I feel like I do pretty well, but I thought I'd go through this article because they asked me to review it. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the article and walk through. And of course, I'll give you commentary as we go. So let's get started. Let's do it. So uh, this young lady, her first name is Mahika. And of course, I'll share her last name and a link to the article if it's something favorable. So here we go. She said, I'm the most inconsistent person you'll ever meet. And that is why you should listen when I say, I know what helps maintain consistency. Other than immediate deadlines, what else pushes a person to complete their task? If you do complete that task today, how to make sure you do it long enough to see the desired results? Now, that's interesting. Let's pause there for a second. So it sounds like we introduced a problem, which I love. Uh, She starts out telling her story that she's the most inconsistent person that you'll ever run into. I, on the other hand, am extremely consistent, but I get what she's trying to say. If you don't have an immediate deadline, sometimes you push things off, right? So I think what she's trying to say is, how do you put things back into the forefront? So let's continue. She says, the steps are very basic in general. You must have heard of them here and there, but you don't give any importance to those things, right? It's not even your fault. This happened to me as well. We all like to think that we are better than others. Even though some of our habits are below average, we don't admit that, do we? Let's pause there again. This is an interesting twist of events, if you will. I shouldn't say twist of events, but it's it's an interesting declaration. So uh, she came in and said that, you know, how do you make sure you do things long enough to see a desired result? This reminds me of the book Atomic Habits, right? I talk about it quite a bit. It's a great book. If you don't have a copy, get one. But in Atomic Habits, they teach you how to amplify things just a small amount per day, how to, you know, turn things up just 1% or one tick per day. And if you can get into that habit, no pun intended, it's going to help you establish good habits and help you eliminate bad ones. So interesting. Now, she also goes on to say that uh, that the, these things are generally, steps are basic in general. This is where I might disagree. I think that the steps that you have to take in order to be in a position where you're consistent uh, may sound basic, but how about this? Easy to describe, hard to practice. There, that's the best way to explain it. So let's see where she goes. What I've seen from my previous patterns and from observing other people around me is that nobody plans. Due to the tendency to believe that we are better than others, we say things like, uh, we'll see whatever happens. I used to say this a lot. That's how I spent my entire school and college life without any planning and without any goals. So trust me, when I say that uh, we'll see whatever happens, The things happening now cannot be ignored. You need a goal and you need a plan to achieve that goal. Okay. So if you've ever heard me publicly speak before, one of the things I talk about in my three keys to success or my three pillars of life, uh, one of them is always that you need to have a clear achievable goal. It's the third pillar. And what I can tell you is too often I see people who set goals that are a chasm wide and that's frustrating. So if you're going to set a goal, you need to make sure the goal is something that you can achieve, a smart goal. But I think that too many times we get into a position where we're like, okay, now what? And we're not set up for success. So the concept of planning a goal and or setting a goal and then having a plan to achieve it is the same as having a vision and strategy if we're talking about Agile. But in life, I think that sometimes we either A, don't set goals, or B, if we do set goals, sometimes we set them so lofty that it makes it nearly impossible to achieve and we become discouraged or C, we make our goals so simple that we celebrate these really, really small successes, but we're not making, uh, we're not making headway to achieving the main goal, the big goal. So she goes on to say, don't make a long-term goal. If you're on, if you, if you are unsure, um, just make a goal for today and follow it up with a plan. The plan should be something that you can act on right now, immediately. This is part of my grow goal, right? Uh, Make sure you have a goal that you're trying to achieve reality, opportunities, and will. So you have to measure and achieve the goal. But will is taking action immediately. Don't ignore the power of momentum. Because when you're in that state, things will happen automatically. If the momentum breaks, it will be difficult to stay consistent. 
because then you'll be easily distracted by either external or internal forces. Get into the habit of goal setting and planning, even for small things. This will help you build discipline, momentum, and consistency all in one. Start with your basic needs, because that's what needs repairing. Once the foundation is strong, aha, by the way, that's number one of my keys for success in life, is to establish a strong foundation. Even the biggest things can be accomplished by small, consistent efforts. So in this example, or in this, uh, this, this article, what's amazing to me is that I don't know if she's ever been to one of my sessions or if she even knows who I am, but uh, she's already called out two of my three pillars to be successful in life. So the only one she's missing is a story to tell. And let's see if she gets there. If she gets there, then she'll have all three. Okay. So, for example, I've been meditating and doing yoga every day for 21 days now. Good for you. That's awesome. And you know what? It feels good. It's a 90-day challenge that will help build consistency. This way, I will show myself that I can be consistent with proof. Once I am in that momentum, I will add more things to my list. What you don't have to do is be vague. Let's say I said, I will write a blog today. That's super vague. When I do this, chances are I will most probably scroll reels for hours. But when I say I will go to the library, write a 100 word intro for a client article, and then do one main level reasoning question, followed up with 20 error detection questions, reply to comments on Medium, research about Substack, et cetera, et cetera, you get the point. Chances are now I will complete much or all of this. Maybe not in that order, but things will get done. And that's what's important. So it sounds like to me here, she's trying to say that having a to-do list or a checklist is important, more so than having an ordered goal, structured, you know, rigid uh, process for what you're gonna do. And that I agree with. The more rigid you are, the harder it's gonna be for you to be consistent, unless it's something that requires rigidity, which makes sense. And that's why I try my best to stay consistent but I still fail and you may too. So these are not some secret magic potions that will make you be consistent like a robot. Do you know why? Because you're not a robot. <laughs> you're a human and it's every human, it's, it's every human's right to be distracted. Okay, so I love the article. I love what she did. Fantastic job, I'll even lend a clap here. That was good, it was right in my wheelhouse. It's exactly what I needed to hear this Friday. Now, the only piece she was missing, since she missed that piece, and uh, by the way, uh, Mahika Joshi, uh, I want to say thank you for writing that article. I'll make sure I include a link to that article in the uh, blog or in, in, the, in the podcast episode comments. But what I want to make, what I want to point out to you is the one little piece you missed. So you got two out of three. The third one is a story to tell. And this is when you're making decisions, when you're trying to be consistent, one of the things you can do is you can say, is this going to cause others around me to be able to do something easier? Is it going to make uh, something facilitatory uh, for someone else? And I think that if we look at the story we tell or the legacy we leave behind, that that's the third piece to being consistent. That if we know that what we're doing today is going to be etched in the mind of others, or that what we're doing today is going to be something that others take action based on our actions, that every action causes an equal and opposite reaction, then we would make our decisions uh, a little more considerately. Uh, we, would, we would try to think about all those around us and the impact that our decisions have and whether the decision is the best that we can do. And I think that through staying focused, that's going to help you stay consistent. And that ties the third piece in. So that's going to do it for today. I really like this article and I like this episode and I think what you did was awesome. So much applause. If you have a comment, a question, an article, a topic, anything you want us to talk about, reach out to us, learn more at agiledad.com. We would love to hear from you. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care. Have a great weekend. Bye now.